G'day there. Ah, uh, this is the completed ramps board for the um, 3D printer I'm working on. It's a rep wrap Mendel sort of variety. Um, I had a bit of an issue that my um, we got 35 volt capacitors there for the surface mount capacitors. There we go. Camera's focused. Um, and seems the board can only take maximum 25 volt capacitors. These ones are a bit fat. So we couldn't fit a lot of the um, surface mount resistors in there and we hadn't actually realised till the last minute that half these components were surface mount resistors because we weren't paying attention. Same with the caps, it was a last minute purchase. Um, and so as you can see I've done some very tricky soldering there and soldered in regular resistors on the SMD pads. It's not a bad workaround but you do have to be careful if you put too much lateral force across the top of them then it tears the pads off the board really easily and I did actually damage one doing that and it was quite tricky to repair it was one of those ones right down in there and the other thing you've got to watch out for is what you can see right there which is that wire is actually really really close to my capacitor there and the outer housing of that capacitor is probably then it's connected to one of the rails of the capacitor, the positive or the negative I was going to put heat shrink down over the resistors but I didn't have any of the right size and I do have some this isn't it obviously I thought it was but I do have some I can just slip down over those capacitors and shrink on there so that nothing can short out against the bodies and I think that's a better fix because you can still read the value of the capacitor off the top if I trim the heat shrink right and you can still read the values off the resistors should something need to be changed although good luck getting in there and changing one of those uh, that capacitor and resistor there too, the green cap, is supposed to be SMD. If we get in the right angle, there is actually a little tiny SMD LED down under there, so I don't know how well we're going to be able to see that. Got some big um, fuses there, resettable fu self-resetting fuses, some offsets for these two are for the extruder, one per extruder. There's probably only going to be one extruder on this first printer, but the board does have the capability to run two. And that one will be for a heating bed. These will be the outputs there. All these ribbons coming off is actually supposed to be just male to female header pins leaving female headers sticking out of the board. But um, A, they didn't turn up on time and B, they never were going to fit in some of these tight gaps up here in between some of our SMD components that were too big. It just was not going to happen. Particularly that row there in between those two capacitors. The headers just weren't going to fit in there. So this is not a bad workaround. What it's for, one of these I have, that one. The Palulu board, which actually drives the NEMA 17 stepper motor here. And there'll be four or five of these on your printer, depending on um, how many extruders and stuff you have, and whether or not you use one or two for the Z-axis. I'll be using mostly two for my Z-axis. They run in parallel, so you only need one board. So you're going to need at least four of these boards per printer. Uh, they're supposed to plug into headers there where those ribbons go in. So follow this one down. Should just be sitting nice and flush over the top of those caps there. But because we couldn't fit the headers in and were tight on space, we decided to do it this way. Having done that, uh, I'm starting to think I should have made them shorter or longer, one or the other. This is kind of a painful length. But anyway, it's, it's all done now. It should work. I've got all the pins soldered on the bottom. There's some of my not yet cleaned up soldering there. Uh, we can see, if I can get my finger out, that little pin there right in the bottom corner. Actually, I actually tore the through hole off. I had a bit of problems with it. So the little round ring came out. And I actually had to strip off the, um, the track there and solder directly to the track and get the solder to bridge across. That one's a bit rough. Other than that, I think I did alright. So there you have it, one ramps 1.4 board. Now after having done this, uh, a few things, definitely make sure you carefully measure all your components or look at the data sheets before you buy them um, and compare to the Eagle files here which are freely available online via GitHub. All the information for this is on the RepRap wiki. Um, 
There's the schematic there with the Eagle file. Just make sure stuff's going to actually fit. And I would also strongly recommend, if you're going to be doing a prototype printer like mine, there's how the ramps board hooks up to everything with your ramps board with the little Palulus on there and the heat bed and the extruders and stuff. Um, but yeah, if you're going to do a prototype like I am, um, I would actually recommend going for the Ramps 1.3 board. There's a couple of things missing that are on the schematics. Um, you don't have these capacitors here, which aren't hard to add in. And there's a couple of resistors added to the MOFSET gates. I don't know why they never had resistors on the MOFSET gates in the first three versions. So they've been added in. Um, there's a resistor on the set, added resistor in the stepper drivers there, which enables a bypass function or something. I haven't quite looked into that yet. Um, but the differences aren't huge. But the 1.3 board is actually all through hole and no SMD. much easier to solder okay and you could easily add in those extra components there if you wanted to the pull up resistors and the extra capacitors on the stepper drivers and all that sort of stuff or even just breadboard one it's not actually as terribly a complex a circuit as what you first look at when you look at this eagle file that looks horrendous because they've packed it in such a tiny tiny space and that could be great for some people that are going for the more commercial stages but for where I'm at, wanting to be able to take parts off and check them and swap them and things like that, something like that or even a breadboard version is much more what you want to be looking at. Uh, anyway, we've got one done now and I do understand a lot more about it having done all this and we do have another circuit board and I have managed to salvage a whole pile of SMD components the right sizes so the next one will be done properly. Alright, that's about it for now. Thanks for watching.